Hi everybody, Fide Master Dennis Montecruz is here, and we continue looking at my games from the recent Indianapolis Open. This is my round two game against Sylvester Smarty, and it was only a draw, and it was in fact a, a very short draw, but as we'll see, it was a game with a lot of content. I had white and played d4. My opponent played knight f6, knight f3, and now a surprise, although I heard from people afterward, I mean I had never seen him play before, but apparently he plays this uh, this move or this this idea uh, fairly regularly. So this is, I'm not even sure what to call this, frankly. It's a Polish defense um, if white now plays g3. So this, this is a so-called Polish defense. Of course, the Polish opening or Sokolski opening is at the beginning of the game where white plays 1b4. And when I face this, my, my favorite way to, to play against this generally is e5 and then taking the pawn on b4 and for instance then bishop takes e5 knight f6 knight f3 castles e3 d5 bishop to e2 and now an important move c5 okay well back to my game so d4 knight f6 knight f3 b5 so um, White has a couple of things, well, several ways that he can he can meet this. I think the worst way is the one that my opponent recommended after the game, and that's g3. So I think this, this really justifies Black's play. He gets, I think, very easy uh, play here. You might want to check out a game, Korchnoi Karpov. I think it's from Hastings, 1971-72, so the, the tournament that overlapped those years. And um, Kort, or, sorry, Karpov with Black won a nice game in this system. Uh, came at a bit... That game came through a different move order. So it was d4, um, knight f6, knight f3, or sorry, g3 on move 2. No, 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 that's not right. Uh, what was it? Okay, I think, yeah, maybe it was, um, yeah, d4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, g3, b5. I believe that's how it came about. So black didn't play b5 until white had committed to g3. That's that's the uh, the key point. Okay, uh, another way to play that I think is quite decent is bishop to g5. And now um, black has you know, a couple of options. He can either ignore this bishop on g5 and play bishop to b7. And then, okay, knight b to d2 takes over, well, prevents knight e4 from having any, any uh, value. So let's say a6. And now white can choose either uh, e3 and some setup like this. Or you can play c3 and then try to follow up with e4. This entails giving up the bishop here, though, uh, with h6. Because if you play back to h4, then g5 and the e-pawn is hanging. So takes, takes, bishop d3 and c5. And um, white has scored pretty decently here, but I, I think uh, I would think that black must be okay here. So, um, you know, there, there are variations like this. There's, there's, um, there are some lines of the Cambridge Springs, I believe where black gets the bishop here. Um, there's also, of course, the uh, the Moscow variation in the semi-slav. And uh, I think there's one other line that is uh, eluding me at the moment. But there are a few variations like this, where black gets this bishop here, white gets the, the pawn duo on d4 and e4. And generally speaking, the uh, the theoretical reputation of those lines for black is, is quite all right. So I, I suspect this should be as well. Anyway, um, yeah, so I would make this e3, c3 maybe a main line, although this too, I think black should be all right. So frankly, I like what I did here. I, I played, after a few minutes, thought e4, just grabbing the center. Um, and of course, you can take, but then my idea is that I'm going to uh, get play on the e-file. His queenside structure is a little bit damaged, and, um, well, I'm hoping to get... Uh, a favorable version of the uh, the Polish opening with colors reversed. Okay, now here black could play bishop to b7 right away. This would just transpose to the game. So this position will actually arise in the game. So my opponent preferred e6 first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this I would say is a key position. So white has made a number of more or less automatic moves and, and here I have to come up with a plan. So what am I going to do with my queenside pieces? What am I going to do to try to drum up some kind of uh, attacking prospects as well? So this is a position where I would suggest that you stop the recording for a while and um, and really kind of dig in and try to come up with a, a good plan. Uh, 
All right, well, I looked at a number of moves here. Uh, after the game, my opponent made a, a second not very good suggestion. I have to say, it's kind of funny. I, I think he played very well in the game, but um, some of his suggestions, I think, weren't so good. So uh, in, in the, in the post-mortem, or at least our little brief discussion, we didn't really have a full post-mortem, but we, we talked about the game for a couple of minutes. Um, one move that he recommended here, and of course it's what I wanted to play, but I, it doesn't work here, and that's C4. So I, I definitely need this pawn on C4, I think, or, or it helps me to, to get some leverage into his position. So I have options of D5 later on. So I think the idea is absolutely correct. It's something that I wanted to do, but I think as far as the uh, the... The, the needs of the position go, I think it's wrong because of knight to d6. And I don't want to give up this the second or this bishop here, but, um, well, I, I have to because otherwise I lose the c pawn and uh, clearly don't get enough for it. So another possibility that I considered is knight b to d2. And, all right, if he takes, then I'm, I think I'm reasonably comfortable. I can either play c4 here or bishop to d3. All right, black will play d6 and follow with this knight development. But I, I think white has some chances for an edge here. But maybe black should just play knight to f6, and my knight on d2 is a little bit stupid. Although, again, I could maybe play bishop to d3, and then c3 or c4, and then move the knight to f1. So this is playable. Uh, another possible move, although it looks a little bit funny, is queen at d3 to uh, induce his knight's retreat. But uh, Well, then the idea would be that after knight to d6, I can play perhaps something like bishop to a4, c3 or c4, and bishop to c2, and get it on this diagonal. So that, that has some, some, some value, I think. It's, uh, it's an interesting prospect. Maybe after bishop to b5 or a4, he can play or consider bishop to a6. Okay, uh, but I think the best move would have been just the simple bishop to d3, bringing my bishop back to the right diagonal, and then after, for instance, knight to f6, playing c4. So here I finally got what I wanted, more or less. And here we see one advantage, too, I should say, of the, the exchange that I, that I made, where I grabbed his b-pawn for my e-pawn. Normally speaking, let's say I have a pawn on e3, he has a pawn on b6. That kind of position is fairly common, and there he would play a move like d5. Here, a move like d5 really doesn't look anywhere near as impressive. Uh, for one thing, I have options like c5, um, his bishop on, on b3 is, is, or b7, pardon me, is kind of exposed. Maybe I could play queen b3 at some point. So um, it just doesn't really look so good. So here I think he needs to play some kind of d6, knight b to d7 setup, and I, I think I should have a, an edge here. So unfortunately, um, I, well, I played knight to c3, and I was hoping for something like knight takes c3, b c3, and then rook to b1. So I've I've slightly damaged my, my queenside pawn structure, of course, but... Um, I've strengthened my center, and um, and now I have two c pawns to play with, not just one but two. And um, my bishop will drop back to d3, and and I like my position. I think I have an edge here. But he played a very good move. He played knight to f6. And now here I really need to have that pawn on c4, so I can consider things like d5, trying to to kind of break break uh, into his position a bit. So here again, I need to to find some some good setup. So I think I found a pretty decent one. Now, in this position, maybe, I don't know if it was played in this position or if it, it simply transposed back into uh, other games, but bishop to g5 reaches a position that has been um, played with white, uh, by white with um, in, in the games of some very strong players, including Yusupov. But it seemed to me like this would be just a path to exchanges. So this didn't really impress me so much. So I'll show you how some of those games went and um, can kind of make our, draw our own conclusions. So Black Castle in every case, and now a number of moves have been tried. In a game between Spiridonov, who's uh, I think a Bulgarian IM, or maybe is an older GM, uh, might be confusing with someone, but anyway, Spiridonov against Keith Arkell, played in Khan, or, or Khan I should say, in 1998. That went uh, Bishop takes F6, Knight E4, c3. And I would say the position here is about equal, but, uh, you know, white has a little more space, but I don't really think the, the kingside attacking prospects are going to amount to enough. And um, indeed, black went on to win uh, a longish game. Actually, all the games that I saw in this were, were fairly long when they involved stronger players. Um, okay, so bishop f6 doesn't really impress me too much. 
Bishop to d3, I think, is a bit more logical. Now here black has several possibilities. Uh, h6 is reasonable. Bishop f3 and then knight c6, while looking a bit untraditional, I think is also pretty decent. Hitting the d-pawn and maybe preparing knight to b4. In a game, uh, Bonin against Dlugi, played in New York in 1984. Uh, Dlugi chose knight to a6. Okay, a3, c5, and here uh, white has some options. Knight to e5 is interesting, I think. Could also go for this double exchange, and then play knight to e4. Black should probably play bishop to b7. With, and that's a nice move, with the idea that if knight takes c5, bishop f3, and then bishop takes d4. So this position, I think, is about equal. Um, one other possibility, and this is what happened in the game, was this interesting pawn sack with d5 that, that Bowden chose. So Dlugi, as is very typical of his play, if you're familiar with him, he, he loves grabbing pawns and holding on and suffering. Uh, he does it very well. So knight takes d5, takes, 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 queen d6, knight e5, and all right, he gave back the pawn, but um, yeah, after, well, here I think he's slightly better. He should have played, I think, maybe rook to b8, but I forget what else he played, but he did go on to win the game anyway. Okay, so that was bishop to d3 from this position. Finally, uh, queen to e2, and this is this uh, turns out to be fairly similar to my to the game that I played. So d6, rook a to d1, knight b to d7, and now again very close to my game, bishop to c1. Um, okay, so here I think the position is just equal though. Um, now we have two games from here in a game. Uh, between Svetlana Matveyeva and um, Lebel Arya, so I haven't heard of it, it's just a, a 2150 player. Uh, black played rook to b8, and here instead of Matveyeva's bishop to d3, and we reach this position which was equal, she won I think in 81 moves, but she was also considerably higher rated than her opponent, but here she has nothing. But after rook to b8, d5 would have been very good, and then bishop to c6, and here white has an edge. And this again shows the uh, the seamy side, the drawback of playing this move b5, I mean that you can weaken squares like c6, and that's just what happens in this position. So the better move here is a6, and this was chosen in the game Yusupov against Drazic from Bastia in 2004. So Yusupov played bishop to a4, knight b6, bishop to b3. Uh, here I think h6 is equal. Uh, Drazic played rook to e8, and after h3, uh, the position is only equal still, though Yusupov went on to win in 49 moves, 35 moves from here. But instead of that, knight to g5 is actually quite interesting. Black should probably play d5, but this takes away d5 from, from all of his pieces and, and closes his bishop on b7. Still, on the other hand, he gets uh, a nice pawn mass in the center in this position, and, and here we have uh, a kind of an interesting kind of French defense uh, pawn structure where black has this uh, nice chain of pawns and has two center pawns to his opponent's none, whereas um, white has, at least for the moment, some sort of a half blockade in the center. Now, this is one of the dangers of my approach, I should say, with, with e4, giving up a center pawn, and in fact, um, black has gotten rid of the second center pawn as well for a couple of wing pawns. So, it's very unclear, and that's why, going all the way back here, when I was showing you this, this Polish variation line with bishop b4 takes here, why I said, again, that c5 is important. So black black needs to keep his, his central presence as much as possible. And for my part, white has to do the same thing in, in, in my game. Now, back very quickly to this uh, Yusupov Drazic sideline. Okay, so instead of a3, again, knight to g5. If instead of d5, which again I think is best, black tries h6, well now takes queen e6, and this leads to, of course, very, very sharp play. Black has to make a series of only moves to survive, and then bishop takes h6. Of course, the bishop can't be taken because of queen g6 check followed by queen to g7 mate. And so this is uh, kind of an unclear position. White has three pawns for the piece, and um, certainly a very dangerous attack, but objectively black is probably still okay. Okay, well anyway, back to the game. So that was bishop to g5, although as we saw on that last line, the bishop ended up retreating to c1. So 
there are prospects for that to transpose to my own game. Okay, well I played bishop to f4, and um, this seemed to me both a good square for the bishop, and I was hoping to, uh, to engage in a little provocation here. So one of my ideas was that if my opponent plays knight to h5, I, I could play bishop to e3 and this is okay, but uh, he could play knight back to f6. I mean, that kind of back and forth is somewhat common. But my idea was to play bishop to e5 instead. Now, if he castles, I play h3, and my bishop will be able to safely retreat to h2, and I think I end up a tempo ahead. I mean, he's going to have to bring his knight back to f6 at some point. If he plays f6, on the other hand, then I have this crushing shot, knight to g5. And um, in fact, his only move here that's, that even keeps him alive is knight f4. And I'm clearly better after this, thanks to his uh, severely messed up pawn structure. But he, he can still kick. If he plays instead something like, let's say, g6, first of all, to protect the knight, well, knight e6 just wins on the spot. Can't take because of the pin. And after queen c8, knight c7 check. He's done. Okay, if he plays f takes e5, well, this is bad too. Knight takes e6 once again, queen h5 check, almost mate, and then queen takes e5, and uh, we can set it up for the next game here. So he's going to lose <coughs> one rook or the other in this position. Okay, so castles is what my opponent played, rightly uh, for forsaking that, that possibility. Now, if I play queen e2 straight away, he plays knight h5. So h3 is what I played. And, um, okay, he played d6. Now queen e2, knight b to d7, rook a to d1. And here, uh, another interesting position. I think I, I have a small edge here. Maybe not so much, but it's a little something. Now, black would like to play c5. So c5 would be appealing, again, as we saw already, to, to get rid of my center pawns and um, slowly but surely try to take over the center himself. But here I think I can maintain an edge. Uh, actually, a couple of different ways. So one thing I could do is just take on c5 and then play knight to d4. And this has a, an interesting kind of double threat. One threat is to play knight to c6, grabbing the bishop here. But there's also knight to f5, which also grabs the bishop here, just grabs a different bishop. So here, for instance, if he plays a6, well, knight c6 isn't bad. And actually, even b4, kind of a goofy-looking move, but a good one, I think both moves give me a small advantage. If he plays queen c7, then knight f5. If he takes, I play queen e7. And on rook f to d8, maybe I could take, but maybe even better is bishop to g5, trying to keep him more or less uh, stuck in place there. So again, I think this is slightly better for me. I also have another option. I could play bishop takes d7, and after knight takes d7, play dc, knight c5, and now not bishop takes d6. This this just doesn't work. For instance, um, after knight b5, you can just play knight to e4, and I've got nothing here. But I can play b4 at this point. And now if he retreats, well, then I certainly can take, and um, there's no fork. I mean, I could play knight to b5. And if knight to a6, so I play a3, and uh, again, I'm better. But bishop takes d6 still doesn't work, but, um, but this does. All right, so c5 is premature here. So my opponent played knight to b6. I dropped the bishop back to c1. And, um, and now I sort of expect him to play knight b to d5. And then I was considering the funny knight to b1, in part just because of its uh, sort of ugly aesthetic, Last move I played bishop to c1, this time I played knight to b1. But the idea is that uh, I'm just going to drive his knight back with c4, and he's got all these pieces fighting for the d5 square, and none of them can keep it. But probably the best is just the simple knight takes d5 and then c4. So again, I get it in, I reroute my bishop to a4 and then to c2, where it takes over the, uh, the diagonal, and I'm in good shape. So, okay, he played queen to c8. And this was a good move, I think. Uh, definitely one that I, I didn't expect, but it, it certainly makes sense. So now c5 becomes uh, an option again. All right. So here I found, I think, a good move. Bishop to d3 is okay. It's not, not bad. But I played this uh, tall-style launch move. So, um, you know, you throw these pieces in front of your opponent's king, and if he doesn't chase them away, then 
then you start to, to create some threats. And if he does chase them away, well, if, if the chasing involves pawn pushes, sometimes that can create weaknesses. So um, anyway, that was the idea. Now here I think he should have ignored the provocation and played c5. And this position is probably about equal, frankly. So maybe bishop to d3 last move would have been a little bit better uh, for me to have played. I, then, I, then it's still equal, but I'm, I think I, I'm closer to an edge. It's kind of on that, on that uh, borderline there. If he plays knight b to d5, then I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy. Okay, I don't want to play bishop to d3 because of knight to b4, but again, takes, takes. And now, um, if he pl if I, I could play bishop to d3 with the idea of c4. Maybe he can play bishop takes a2, but that's very risky. Certainly I'll have full compensation here. Uh, but I could also just play c4 and then play d5, kind of switching gears here and playing against his, his light squared bishop and uh, playing against the c6 square and um, going for, for a, a completely different sort of uh, approach. All right. But my opponent played h6. I played knight g to e4, and now he made another very interesting move. Uh, knight takes would, would have been fine for me. I think I'm slightly better here. But he played knight b to d7. And now we have really, I would say, the last key moment of the game. So this is uh, another good place to really stop and think what, what white's move should do. Well, what I did here, I think, is is definitely... It's probably not the best. Um, it's not maybe a, a mistake, but it's it's not very testing. So I played bishop to d3, and after c5, all of a sudden I realized I, I could almost even be in trouble here. So I, I have a couple of, you know, I, I had to think for a while here just to see, you know, if, if I could put out the fire, if I could make sure that nothing bad happens. And really the following two continuations are, are equivalent. Um, so I, I could have played d takes c5, Knight takes, bishop to e3. Then he plays queen c6, and um, we'll come back to this position in a moment. In the game, I played knight takes f6. He recaptured, and I played d takes c5 and offered a draw here, which he accepted. So um, for those of you who are anti-draws, you, you may start throwing your, your popcorn and, and stuff at the, at the screen at me, but... Really, I mean, my thinking was something like this. All right, queen takes. Okay, what do I do now? If I play bishop to e3, queen c6, this is a little bit unpleasant. I mean, of course, I can play f3, or I could play f4. Um, so f4, for instance, gets into kind of a French-like position. But black is doing really quite well here. And, and I don't really see how I can win a position like this without a lot of help. Um, likewise, if I play knight to e4, which is what my opponent expected, and certainly I was considering it, but I didn't like this either takes, takes, and then d5. And his central structure is very strong. He can put his rooks on the b and c files and have um, some very nice pressure against my queen side. So this I didn't really believe either. I mean, I didn't think I was going to lose here. I mean, I felt like, you know, the position is maybe a little bit better for him here, close to equal. And, and likewise, with these positions, you know, this, this is probably the better line for me. But um, I, I didn't really see any any uh, way for me to, to be better or any plausible way for him to, to lose. I mean, it would have been a really long, hard slog, and um, and he would have had perfectly decent chances too. So a combination of those kinds of th thoughts um, plus just the, the, the chance to get a, a good night's sleep, so, you know, get the game over with, and also as far as, you know, I was trying to think ahead in terms of planning for points, and, and it worked out properly, I think, too. Um, so it didn't seem like such a bad a bad decision. So I, I think it was it was reasonable, but um, yeah, I mean it, it was a short game in terms of moves. We both spent a fair amount of time. We both spent well over an hour, or I spent well over an hour on the game. He spent about an hour um, as well. So um, anyway, you guys can uh, decide whether to pillory me or or not for this. I I feel like it was an, an okay decision, but um, well, let's let's get back to the game and see what could have been done instead of bishop to d3. So uh, perhaps objectively the best move is bishop to f4, and this prevents c5. So had I, I realized c5 was such a, a problem, and I, I, I probably should have, but um, you know, I looked at c5 in some earlier places, but it was one of these things where I always felt like I'm trying to push, I'm trying to push, I'm trying to push. And at a certain point, your vigilance can get dulled. You start to think, well, okay, my opponent can never have any threats, and... Um, you wake up all of a sudden, and it's oops time, and that's what happened here. 
So with bishop to f4, I think, um, you know, I still have a, a good position, and he still has to uh, to neutralize my my possibilities. But um, the most interesting move, and this is what I had originally intended here, was rook to d3. And um, and I, I liked this. Okay, now he could play it kind of safe here, with knight e4, knight e4. And um, okay, if knight to f6, then I trade and play rook to g3. And this looks fairly promising. I mean, his kingside is fairly bare. My bishop may come back to d3. Queen comes to h5, and, and you can see. I mean, it's uh, far from from unlikely that that black will have some some defensive worries here. Okay. Um, the question, though, the key question in a position like this, though, is what about c6? So this, I, I saw all of a sudden and, and uh, came to feel a lot less happy about the, the, the game. Because now, well, the point is, if I drop my bishop back to a4, there's bishop to a6. And uh, I got kind of unhappy when I saw this. And, um, okay, if I go back to c4, then he has d5. So I had spent some time thinking about this position. And um, you know, looking at moves like rook to g3, and um, and bishop h6 and the like, and and also from here, so from here, c6 straight away. All right, with again the same set of ideas and and maybe the same set of white replies. All right, well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you some thoughts I have on this version. Okay, and I'm going to leave c6 as an analysis exercise for you guys. So maybe we'll discuss it next week, uh, you know. But well, what I want to say is, don't use the computer. So I mean, I've all the the analysis I'm going to show you now of the uh, the 94, 94 c6 line is without a computer. Okay, and so I'm going to request you do the same thing. I, I will check um, for next time with the computer too, and then we'll we'll uh, kind of see where everything stands. But um, but I would say if you want to leave comments, by all means do so. But no engine analysis, all you. All right, so I'm going to show you what I come up with here. Now, I think that uh, maybe bishop c4 and then rook g3 stuff might be fine, and even rook to g3 here might be interesting. But I think bishop takes h6 is big trouble for black. So maybe there's some way out that I haven't found, but this will give you an idea of some of the uh, the neat idea, the neat um, tactical possibilities that white has. Okay, well, black has, I think, at least four possible moves here. There's g takes h6. There's, well, okay, let's come back to that. There's c takes b5, so grabbing one bishop or the other. And then there's putting more white pieces under attack. f5, which not only attacks the uh, knight, but also makes rook f7 possible. And d5. Okay, and um, again, I would really recommend that you try to analyze all this on your own, too, before you watch what I uh, present here. Okay, well, let me start with the moves that I think are probably the least significant, although I'm going to deal with them in a kind of a quick way, and, and maybe there are some oversights here. So this is this is going to be kind of uh, programmatic. So on f5, this um, it looks a bit hard to believe, and, and here's a line that at least looks pretty pretty plausible to me at first glance. Knight takes d6. Uh, I don't see anything to be gained by black not taking the knight. So bishop takes, and now queen e6 check. And um, here, black has big problems. Uh, for instance, if king to h7, then we just take this guy. All right, right now, white is actually up material, by the way. So white has four pawns for uh, for the piece, and is threatening the rook, and is threatening the bishop on d6, and threatens something like queen to h6 check. So if king takes g7, then queen to d6, and now both rook to e7 and rook to g3 are threatened, this has to be just dead lost for black. Okay, uh, of course maybe rook to f7 should be examined here, but but still, I mean, if nothing else, white can play queen takes d6, or better still, I think probably bishop takes c bishop to c4. Uh, black's got to be lost here. Okay, so f5 I think is not good. Likewise, d5 is pretty implausible. Again, I think bishop takes g7 must be very very strong. Uh, king takes looks. Uh, Highly uh, unlikely to succeed after rook to g3 or queen h5. So let's say d takes e4, queen h5, threatening mate on h8. King takes, rook here, queen g5 mate. 
So again, that I don't, I don't claim any uh, pretense to to exhaustiveness on these last two variations, but I think they do give a pretty good idea of how bad Black's position is after e either of those tries. So let's look at G takes H6. This has some nice lines. All right, rook to G3. Uh, check. Now, if bishop to g5, we just take uh, with the knight, and that's winning immediately. So, uh, and king to h8 makes no sense because of queen to h5, and the king's got to come up to h7. Since bishop g5, we just take the bishop. So, king h7, and now bishop to d3. And here, it looks like f5 is, is the most sensible move. I mean, it's hard to see what else black would play if king h8, queen h5, and we're threatening knight takes d6, discovered check. Also, knight f6, check, followed by queen h5. Even better, since that forces mate. So, f5. And now, okay, if you play queen h5, black has to be a little careful. If he plays rook to g8, uh, the threat's, of course, queen to g6, check, and then either mate on h6 or g7. So, let's say rook to g8. Well, here I think white has a, a very nice uh, combination to finish the game. Knight takes d6. Bishop takes d6, rook takes e6. So now we're threatening queen takes h6 mate. And if um, something like, well, we're also threatening bishop takes f5 or queen takes f5. So there's just too much. So for instance, bishop f4, bishop f5 check, king h8. And okay, we can do it the flashy way, sacking the queen. We give checkmate. Unfortunately for white, after queen h5, queen to e8 just puts an immediate end to um, to the attack. But this knight takes d6 idea is really quite strong. So the immediate knight takes d6, I think this is winning. Um, we're threatening queen takes e6 as well as the queen. And after bishop takes d6, queen takes e6 might be winning here too. It's uh, it's kind of, you know, a little bit, a little bit tricky maybe, but I think it wins. But um, I think queen to g4 actually let me, let me just put this in here, as a, just as a, a possible alternative. But queen of g4, I think, this, this is, I, I believe, wins. So let me show you some, some lines here. So if bishop takes g3, okay, rook takes e6, and, um, and now we're threatening rook to e7 check here. So rook e7 and mate in, in two moves at most with queen g7. Okay, if uh, rook f7 then bishop f5 is an overload. If rook takes, then again rook to e7 check. If the king goes to h8, then uh, rook takes h6 is mate. So that's no good. So after rook e6, it looks like the only try here is queen to d8. And uh, this is kind of funny because now the, the queen and king will both die in their beds. They'll, they'll both go home to, uh, to, for the end of the game. So check, 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 and there. And it's mate next move. Actually, the queen has to... Uh, to give up her life here, but um, anyway, it's it's mating. So um, back here, so after queen g4, bishop takes g3, rook e6, white wins. All right, if rook to g8, now we take this guy. So check again, and now rook e6. And okay, the threat. Let's say black plays uh, grabs the rook. Then we have mate and two like this. So bishop to f8, and now it looks almost as if black has a defense cobbled together here. And he has three pieces up. Okay, for four pawns, but still, three pieces is a lot of stuff. But I believe that uh, that white wins here. So um, let's see. So rook takes g8, king g8, rook g6. Um, actually, yeah, no, this this doesn't win at all. So just bishop to g7. So I had a had a little hallucination here. So this is not a winning variation at all. So let's go back to, to this position here. Yeah, that's that's not good. I'm trying to think why I concluded that. Hmm. Okay, so we have some some, some problems here. Yeah, this bishop, I mean, the, the bishop and the knight, I mean, are really functioning beautifully here. And it's it's hard to, to create an overload. I, I just don't have enough pieces to uh, to overload black at this point. So, okay, yeah, I had a little little hallucination in, in the midst of 
what was otherwise a nice set of variations. Okay, well, here's one one idea. All right, rook e to g6. Okay. Um, so on this, of course, black cannot take. Okay, so we're threatening queen to g8 mate. If the bishop moves, we have queen g7 mate. And if knight f6, we just take it and then come back to g6 and then go to g8. Okay, but of course he doesn't have to take the rook. All right, so bishop to g7 would seem to be forced. And now, can we break through here? I see a draw with queen h5, king h7, and then repeating. But is there a win? Hmm. Let's, let's see. So let's try queen h5. Well, he has queen f8 also, so that's... This should be okay because, yeah, I mean, he can take back either way. And there's no no anything here. And even, even queen takes should be okay. I mean, I take, but I'm just down so much material here. So queen and five pawns, kind of unusual. Queen and five pawns for two rooks, a bishop, and a knight. Bizarre. Um, so queen h5 is not working. And, of course, there's also king h7, too, which is at best a draw for me. Um, hmm. Yeah, this darn knight. Okay, so maybe maybe I'm just out of business here. Too bad. Yeah, all right, so this line doesn't work. So let me try one other variation from before. It does feel like there should be something. Anyway, more, more uh, homework for me as well. So let me take a quick look at queen e6, which I had analyzed before this. All right, so now... Uh, one idea. Bishop takes g3, and bishop takes f5 check. Okay, he can't retreat the the uh, king. That gets mated by force. So, for instance, uh, king to g8. Whoops. Well, king to g8. Oh, pff, can't do that. Sorry. King g7 here. There's mate. Okay. Um, so after bishop g3, bishop f5, he needs to take. And now queen f5 check. Okay, and uh, of course the king can't go to g7 because of rook e7 check. So he's got to go to h8. And now the problem here was um, yeah, if rook to e7, then queen to g8. And <clears throat> my, my position looks very aggressive, and uh, I'm threatening all kinds of pieces. But, you know, as Tal used to say, though in a different context, uh, you can only take them one at a time. So, yeah, I'm threatening lots of stuff, but um, I'm, I'm a little too slow. So, for instance, if fg3, then rook f8. And I can take this guy, too. And actually, maybe this is all right, because I, I do have three three pawns, or sorry, four pawns for the piece. So maybe this is all right. Um, can he save? And he can't save the knight. So maybe this is maybe this is fine. Okay, so perhaps this is the way to go then. So, um, yeah. I'm I'm down a piece, but four pawns, some attacking prospects still. So this looks like it may be the the uh, the solution to my woes. So queen g4, while interesting, perhaps fails. So maybe queen e6 is the uh, the right way to go. All right. So you can see very very complicated stuff here. Okay. And then we have one more line to look at too. So that was g takes h6. Finally, there's c takes b5. Uh, I don't don't think we covered this one. Let me see. Did we cover this? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, so from here, white has at least three three moves that come into consideration. Rook g3, queen g4, and bishop takes g7. So queen g4, I'm not sure what to think about this. I haven't really looked at it too carefully yet. Um, g6, of course, is forced. And then one idea would be knight d6, <coughs> bishop d6, rook e6. And... Um, who knows? A line that I think is a dead end is rook g3. So, um, of course not bishop takes f6 because bishop g7 and queen g4 wins. But um, g6 should be fine. Uh, of course I can recapture, and I probably have to, but in this position, black's bishop pair I think is, is better than my rook and pawn, and, and certainly there's, there's no attack here. 
but um, that's probably my best because the the directed attempts to uh, to go after black don't seem to work. So, for instance, queen h5, he just plays king h7, and uh, there's nothing here. So I could try sacking my queen, but I, I don't see any real follow up, and I only have a rook and a pawn for the uh, for the queen. If I play knight d6 and then rook g6, okay, it's fun to sacrifice pieces, but at some point it, it actually needs to get somewhere. And here I, I think um, I'm now nowhere. So he's threatening um, threatening uh, mate on g2, and I have no good checks. Queen f4, rook takes f4. So this uh, just looks like a dead end. Um, all right, so that was rook to g3. But... I think I have a win with bishop takes g7. So I think this wins. So let's see the possibilities here. Um, just a couple I'll mention. Bishop takes e4 is one. On this, I think I can just take. All right, so if he retreats, if he moves the rook, I just play rook to g3. and uh, Or maybe even, yeah, rook to g3 should just be crushing. So um, oh, f5 is another idea. So f5, but then queen e6 check. And rook to g3 check, and uh, this is this is mating. So king takes g7, rook g3. Now, if king h4, uh, h8, then queen g4 wins, threatening mate on g7 and on h5. And um, okay, if king f6, queen f4 is mate, and if king h6, then we win with this little staircase uh, procedure, or not staircase, but little little stepping stone procedure. Queen f4 check. Okay, if he goes here, then check, and then check, and then mate. And if king h7, it's the same thing. Queen g4, threatening mate both on g7 and on h5. And that's mate. So, after... Yes, yeah, so that covers everything with bishop takes e4. So that leaves king takes g7. And now, similar idea. Rook to g3, check. Okay, he's got to go to h6. Otherwise, I play queen h5, mate. Queen e3. Okay, if he goes to h5 here, then I can play queen f3, which will transpose, or rook to g5 check. So king h7, queen f3, king h6, queen f4. Okay, and here we have the staircase. Okay, uh, he could do this, but then it's mate in one either way. So um, king h7, queen g4, king h6, and there's that. All right, so this gives you some idea of the uh, really fun variations that were possible. If I had played rook to d3 and he traded and then played c6. Okay, so bishop h6 probably wins, although it looks like that g takes h6 line, maybe um, there might be some double checking required in, in there. But um, there's still the question, what happens if he plays c6 straight away? And so that'll leave for you guys to uh, to work on. So this would be the key position. Should I play rook to g3, bishop h6, bishop c4, something else? Probably there's, I don't think knight f6 is any good. Um, but, you know, it might be worth a, a quick look anyway. So um, have fun with this, and I will see you next week. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably present round three. Well, it depends on how much material there is on this, frankly, because round three, or sorry, round four, I took uh, a buy in round three. So round four was actually a very long game, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. But um, we'll come back to this next time. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.